Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about basic F5 administration. I get a lot of people who ask kind of really basic administrative questions about the F5 interface because they've either inherited an F5 device or their management has purchased one and now they need to learn a bunch of stuff to be able to administer it. Um, we do occasionally see some people who have F5 devices in their data center and they had a vendor come, they install everything, set it up and kind of walk away and not leave them with the appropriate knowledge of sometimes even how to log in. So we get these questions a lot. So I wanted to go ahead and make a couple of, maybe a series of videos to walk people through the basics of F5 administration. Uh, today we're gonna to cover kind of the logging in, navigating the interface and some of the more important modules. So let me start here. Um, Today we have this particular IP address, which is just here in my lab. Um, you can notice all of the GUI administration is done via HTML5. And then I'm just gonna log in here. And we presented it with a, a really nice interface. F5 actually has a very usable interface. It's one of the better ones that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's kind of go give you a tour here. Um, at the top, we have the, the host name, the IP address, the date, um, time, and then who I am and the role that I'm logged in as. This can be several different roles, but today I'm logged in as resource administrator. Um, along the left-hand side, we have all the modules. We also have help and about. And the help is actually pretty good with F5. And they actually have a very good online help, one of the better documented devices out there. Um, along the left side, you're gonna see all the different modules, so statistics, um, IAPS, DNS, local traffic, all of these will be covered in later videos. We're gonna cover about three of them today um, as we go along. And in the center here, we have the actual work area. And this is the thing that changes as people uh, click on different modules and different tasks that need to begin get done. So some of the very beginning things that you need to know, if you've never logged in, um, or if you're trying to figure out what you can show to say management, or just kind of learn how your box is doing, one of the first ones you should click on is go to statistics and then click on Dashboard. Dashboard is a real-time interactive dashboard of what's going on on your F5 device. It's gonna give you CPU, it's gonna give you various memory breakdowns, it's gonna give you connection, throughput, all the things that are, you're gonna find are very important to how your box is doing in real time. You also get a drop-down here where you can choose to look at statistics based on the module that you're interested in. So we see this one a lot when people come up and they like to look at graphical things. Um, we also see this particular one that is opened up and put on top of, say, a big network operations center screen. Um, it's not really the screen that you use in a day-to-day -day basis, but it is the one that a lot of management likes to see and specifically see it. Um, it's kind of the showy screen that everyone likes to see. So let me close this pop-up here and then we'll go to statistics and performance. This is the screen that the administrators normally use. This one has the details. It also has the history. You can see here, it goes back to about a month or so, and it has details on just about anything that you're gonna wanna see. Um, so you can see over time how your box is doing um, in just about any kind of category of performance that you're wanna look at. If you're looking for various details, this is where you're gonna wanna go statistics performance, okay? So again, um, let's go on to the next one. If we go to system, here's where a lot of administrators need to spend more time, in my opinion, kind of learning what system does for them. So system configuration device, let's go there first. Here's the question we get a lot, and especially what TAC is gonna ask you, or support, sorry, I'm what F5 is support is going to ask you is what's your serial number? Here it is. Um, a lot of people when they first go into this F5 and they don't know their way around the interface, they don't know where to go and get that. And they may even go and look, try to find the serial number on the box and all kinds of things. Here it is. System, configuration, device, serial number is right there. This makes your life so much easier when you can easily give them this, especially if you're trying to call in a support case. So there's one. Uh, the next one that's important is license. Here's what's licensed. 
So you get a lot of questions from support and maybe your management. What can this box do for us? So the first thing you want to know is what is licensed? So if you go to system and license, you'll see that this one, it'll show all of your licenses here. Now this is particular lab device is licensed with just about everything. So there are only a couple of little subscription things that are not here but it has just about everything licensed. Now your F5 device is likely not to have all of this licensed, but it could, it could. F5 has a very simple licensing scheme and they actually call it good, better, and best. Um, and this is what best would look like. Um, so just because it's licensed doesn't mean it's enabled. So that's the next important part. If you look up here, there's resource provisioning. You can also get to there by going to system resource provisioning. This is important if you're looking, if you just have understood that you've licensed um, a module and for some reason on the left hand side you can't see it, you can't get to it. The very next thing you should check is, is it provisioned? So here you can see that I have two things, this one and that one that are checked. Those are the only two modules that are provisioned. So if I was thinking, man, I, I paid a lot of money to get access policy manager because I got best licensing. Um, and all of the rest of these modules, but it's not showing up. It's because it's not provisioned. And for me, that's okay. I'm, I'm not using it right now in my lab device. It doesn't need to take up any memory for right now. But if you're missing something, it's almost always either A, you didn't license it, or B, you didn't provision it. Um, so let's make sure that it's provisioned. Um, that's the first thing that support will ask you, is it provisioned? Uh, so go ahead and check. It'll, it'll make everybody's life easier. Okay, and then down here under support, there's a concept called QK view. QK view is a very useful, um, I guess, configuration dump. That's probably the best way to think of it. It's going to tell support everything that they need to know about your F5 device. If you're going to call them, you might as well just go ahead and create a QK view and get ready to send it to them. Um, is very common for them to ask for it. You should know how to do it as a basic administrator. Again, let me cover that. System, support, QK view. It's, um, I guess, the best thing that I can compare it to if you come from the Cisco world. It's very similar to a show tech. But F5 you know, calls it QK view, so you need to get used to that term. Okay. The other thing you need to know how to do is called archives. So go to archives. System Archives. This is backing things up. So if you need to create it, and you should, you shouldn't need to, you should always create a backup anytime you make a major change. And you should always create an archive right before you do any kind of software updates, and just basic administrative stuff. Give it a name, choose, in my opinion, choose disabled encryption and exclude private keys. If you choose to include these things, realize that your private keys will be in your backup. And if you send that backup to someone, say F5 technical support, that your private keys will now be in the wild. So you want to almost always exclude your private keys. There should be no reason that F5 technical support should need them. And if you don't, or if you're not 100% sure that everything's going to be secure, um, choose exclude. Give it a name, click finish, and that's a good way to get a backup. And then when you're done, you'll get a list of all the backups that you've been making. Okay, so that's the quick walkthrough of, I, of the sections that I think that every single administrator is anybody at any level who's administering F5 should definitely know how to get to. Um, in the next video, we're going to start covering local traffic management. Local traffic management is the fundamental um, module that makes F5 work. It's what they're good at. It's the reason it's a full proxy architecture and local traffic is what makes essentially all the other modules work so well. So until then, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to try to answer them. Um, talk to you later. Bye.